Hi there, this is Saul Chironin from Saul Chironin Films and welcome to another random review. And today's random review is Sergei Parahanov's The Colour of Pomegranates. And it's also the question of what makes a masterpiece? This is a beautiful edition by Second Sight. So it's a two disc Blu-ray, one which has the Armenian cut, which is um, Parahanov's preferred film, and it also has the Russian version um, after it was censored by um, the Russian authorities. The second disc has um, a short film, Kiev Frescoes, which is a kind of template um, for The Colour of Pomegranates and it has commentaries and there is um, extras about Tony Rains about when um, Parahanov was in prison um, for being an outsider and probably for being a homosexual as well um, there's a making of the colour of pomegranates and memories about Syed Nova or the King of Songs um, and there's appreciations and there's things about the music in the film so the film itself is a very nice booklet as well which is about the making of the film and the background and the historical reference. So the film itself is about an 18th century poet called Syed Nova or King of Songs and it just shows in a series of what are essentially tableaus um, using metaphor and colour and sound to kind of kind of show stages in his life um, the Russian authorities put a thing saying you know this isn't a biopic and it's not really a biopic um, it's more about his life you see him as a child you see him as a youth um, his relationship with his muse um, and then he finds the church and then it leads to his death now as biopics go even though it's not a biopic um, it is one of the most beautiful and visually arresting films you'll ever see again it's like a static camera and it is just kind of living paintings um, as you can see um, in the photos along the side here some of the imagery is just jaw-droppingly good um, it does remind me of two films um, Tarkovsky's Andrei Rublev Tarkovsky and Parahanov were part of the kind of Russian new wave of the 60s and Parahanov was so impressed by Tarkovsky's Ivan's Childhood from 1962 um, who isn't impressed by Ivan's Childhood from 1962 um, and that was a big influence on um, the way he would make films and the other film that I kind of get a feeling about is Jodorowsky's The Holy Mountain. It just has that kind of look. And again, 
you know, I'm not that smart. So as far as looking into the history of the poet and the history of Armenia and Georgia and Russia, um, that might kind of go over one's head. But it's really the impact of images. Um, there is a kind of narrative, but there's just so much to look at. Um, and again, very much like Jodorowsky's Holy Mountain, you're not really going to understand every single reference. Or maybe that's just me. Um, but it was just, <coughs> excuse me, just also, there's a nice piece about the restoration of the film. Um, from two different versions and different elements and it was just when the person who was talking about the restoration she said and of course the colour of pomegranates is a masterpiece and it's highly regarded as a masterpiece and I was just thinking well what actually makes a masterpiece? Now granted I've only watched it once the Armenian version and the Russian version. Um, there's not a lot of difference. Um, the Russians just kind of put chapter headings and um, there's a few extra scenes in the Armenian version. But on first blush, I wouldn't say it's a masterpiece. It is, I would say, definitely buy it, check it out. Especially this lovely set. Um, it's certainly a film that you could watch without the volume. Just because the images are just so astounding. Um, again, there's two other biopics that have a kind of different way of doing biopic. Or a film about somebody. One is Andrei Rublev by Tarkovsky, and the other one is Francois Gerard's um, 32 short films about Glenn Gould, which just has, which is a, a brilliant film, which just has kind of 32 little episodes of his life, showing you what kind of personality he was, um, and then that builds up to creating this image of the artist. Um, again, I'm maybe not that intelligent, but for me, the colour of pomegranates doesn't completely work as a, you know, summation of a portrait of an artist. Um, yes, it has unbelievable imagery. It is actually quite beautiful. Um, but on first viewing, granted, I'll, I'm going to have to watch it a few more times, but I would maybe just give it a 4 out of 5. But again, there are, it, again, it just got me thinking of, there's so many films that are just considered, oh, that's a masterpiece. But how do you actually define a masterpiece? So, I would like to hear anybody's thoughts on The Colour of Pomegranates whether you think it's a masterpiece and how you would define a masterpiece. For me, a masterpiece is a film that is as close to perfection as you can get. Um, you know, having a really good first half or having a really good 25 minutes doesn't really make a masterpiece. But as a masterpiece, the film itself, or is it the influence it had as well, um, or as a masterpiece, just the film itself in a vacuum? And for me, they have to be as close to perfection as possible. You know, scene for scene, shot for shot, as close to perfection as possible. But again, let me know what your views on what a masterpiece actually is. Or is there criteria that we can write down 
for what makes a masterpiece. I'd be interested to know your thoughts. But certainly, I would highly recommend The Colour of Pomegranates. Um, Because if cinema is the ultimate visual art, then um, this is a feast for the eyes and soul. Um, Because it just has just wonderful compositions, wonderful static camera framing. Um, There's as many metaphors and... um, symbolism going on as you can shake a pointed stick at. Um, Yeah. Please let me know in the comments below what your feelings are for the Colours of Pomegranates and what makes a masterpiece in your view. So thank you very much for watching. And this is Saul Chironan from Saul Chironan Films. Have a lovely evening.